my experience in Vietnam in one sentence. <laughs> uh, well, I don't care how much they train you for it, you ain't ready for Vietnam. Near as I can tell, I was in or involved in 17 different combat operations. My MOS, I think it was 3516, which is a truck mechanic. And uh, I went to truck mechanic school and all that. And uh, I requested to go to Vietnam and I got over there, they don't need truck mechanic. They need a rifleman. So my MOS changed to 0311. And they assigned me to Delta Company and uh, this was the first night and it was like 4th of July. Bullet shells, mortars. The next morning, they told me, to, you just stay saddled up, you're going on patrol. I'm walking point. This guy, his name was Frank Holtzenbeck. He saw I was new and didn't know what to look for and all that, and he knew the VNVAs out there. He did something nobody ever does. He took my place walking point. He was, he had about two months left to go. So Holtzenbeck was in front of me and we got ambushed. And they're shooting and everybody's hollering. And I got hit one time before I jumped off the trail and I fell into a hole. It was the NVA fighting hole. When Holtzenbeck, I don't know how many times he was shot and he got killed doing my job. He was, I was supposed to be up there. I went to the hospital ward and Holtzenbeck went to the morgue. I went right back to the same fire team, but it was different. It finally dawned on me, this is serious as death. Ain't nobody playing out here. So I got a Purple Heart, combat action ribbon. Saw a lot of people get killed, wounded, I had this PTSD that I didn't know nothing about. I was always angry. Uh, <laughs> see, yeah, I get kind of shaky inside talking about it. Vietnam veterans have some unique challenges. The, the culture at the time was not just outspoken against the war, but it was outspoken against veterans. And so that's where the problem is, I think, for Vietnam vets is that they personally weren't recognized or honored for what Vietnam veterans sacrificed and what they gave. The way that they're treated was despicable. And we want them to know that they're the prize of our nation. We have a credible respect for them and we value them. And we hope to meet them. Yeah, the goal is to honor them in the same way that um, Iraq and Afghanistan veterans have been honored. I never had no quarrel with any Vietnamese. Didn't know any. They're communists, so you got to I thought I would be welcomed like all them old World War II veterans, you know. Nobody welcomed us when we got there. I thought I was doing my patriotic duty. Everybody at home was all up in arms about stopping the war and protest. <laughs> Boy, this is, this is crazy. What the hell did I do wrong? Uh, I may have killed a few people, but they were trying to kill me. Uh, Huh? Deep breath. Yeah. This event is for you, for Vietnam veterans. It's not for veterans of other uh, combat eras. It is for you. I, I wouldn't even tell nobody I was a Vietnam veteran for a long time. I mean, I was actually ashamed of it. At this time, Jack Hinkle, will you please come forward? But I ain't no more. Welcome back to the world. <laughs> there it is, it's beautiful. Oh, I feel good about it. Yeah, I sure do. I'm gonna get that pin and be recognized. Good morning, Colonel. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We need to be honored. It's been that long. <laughs> I don't know of anybody that ain't got problems from over there. And I see veterans, I always say, welcome home.
The main thing is Frank Holson back died where I was supposed to be. I always thought I need to go see his family. One Saturday, I woke up, didn't have nothing to do. His mother lived in Alexandria, and I went up there and met his mother. I kept telling them, I said, I'm, I'm sorry I'm so late doing this, but I had to do it for me. And we went to the graveyard. She showed me all the pictures of his funeral and all that stuff. His mother and I sat at the table and we said a prayer. I got my truck headed home. Boy, I was as light as a feather. That was a weight off of me. One of the hardest things, leaving Vietnam, you had to turn in your rifle. It's like somebody just took your leg. And you, Where the hell my leg? <laughs> And I never will forget looking out the window and seeing that coastline disappear.